air conditioning on this 2019 Subaru Outback. Now I'll let you see the pipe right here. You see the black pipe? That is the cold pipe. And if you look at where the little green or blue X is focusing, and you look up where it says minimum temperature, minimum, it says 40 degrees right now. Let me get close. Let's get down in there. So we're at 29 degrees, 29, right around 29, 30 degrees. That is the absolute minimum temperature coming out of that line. But that's according to this, but that's on shiny aluminum. So it doesn't always give you the right, you go, well, maybe that's a little bit too cold. Well, I have a clamp on temperature there and I have a, you see the, um, temperature sensor right there to double check that and we're very cold we could see we're frosting or, or condensating on the glass from the cold air coming in the car it is cold and our temperature is 38 degrees let's see if i can focus there come on focus yeah you don't want to focus do you? there you go 38 degrees so we have 38 degrees coming out of the dash we had 30, what did we say this was? That said it was 36 degrees, 35 degrees, 34, somewhere around there. So that, that proves if it's 38 degrees of air temperature, whatever the air temperature is, the coil, the refrigerant is colder because there's some inefficiencies and losses of the air transfer from air to the aluminum coil, it doesn't pick up all the cold. Oh, that was the wrong word. That was the wrong way. The heat doesn't all get absorbed into the refrigerant and the refrigerant doesn't pick up all the heat. That's what I should have said. I'm saying cold is a thing. Cold is not a thing. It doesn't exist. Um, let's get over to our pressures. Let's see how we've been. This is our low side pressure. And you can see we've been steady at about 28 PSI, whether it's down here on minute 15. See, I've been running this a while. Minute 18, we're going into minute 19 right there, 28 PSI, 29 PSI. Within one PSI, this has been moving on the low side pressure. High side pressure, my fans in this on this vehicle under these operating conditions, the fans have been 100% steady. They haven't gone up, they haven't gone down, they haven't turned off. They haven't surged. They've been very rock steady. That's only under these conditions for this vehicle. If we come over here to superheat and subcooling, take a look at our superheat. We're going between 9 and 13. There we go. Hit 14 for a fraction. There it goes. Oh, we got 15. So 9 and 15, 16. Now, this isn't 100% accurate and true because I do not have insulation around the clamps and we have really hot blowing air over this system right now. Now, my subcooling, we got 39, right? But I'm taking my subcooling after it's gone through the intercooler, after it's gone through the heat exchanger. So this liquid refrigerant has passed over this cold line. You see how cold this line is? There's literally water. There's water on the line. So that's how cold this hot liquid refrigerant that's coming from the condenser is passing through. So let's take the temperature of this. See the subcooling? See the temperature? 73 degrees. Our outside ambient temperature is 74 degrees. So let's take this liquid line right there. And this is a hot clamp. It's really hot. And let's move it over to the liquid line. Where's our, there's our liquid line right there coming out of the condenser let's see if i can hook on to it do i have a spot can i get on there uh, no i can't get there where can i oh looks like the only place i could get before you see where it goes in right there this is coming out of the condenser let's see what the temperature it was 70 it was 73 degrees over there Let's see what the temperature of the liquid refrigerant that is coming out of the bottom of the condenser before it goes into the heat exchanger. 83 degrees. So it's a 10 degree drop. 
of the liquid refrigerant that has been subcooled by the condenser. And remember, the condenser has a subcooling passage built into the bottom. I've showed many videos on that. And it's coming out there at 83 degrees. And then it goes into the heat exchanger right there where you can see that tube go inside. And that liquid hot 83 degree refrigerant is traveling on the outside of the cold suction line. And the heat is being removed out of the liquid refrigerant as it travels in this direction towards the expansion valve. And then it comes out right here and it's 73 degrees right here. So a lot of the energy has been moved out of the liquid refrigerant and being delivered to the expansion valve so it could do more work at removing more energy potential as it enters the evaporator. Um, let's see how this vehicle reacts to RPMs. Remember in many videos I showed you different vehicles react differently to RPMs. Oh God, it's cold in here. Yeah, 38, 39 degrees coming out. Nice and toasty. Or toasty is the wrong word. Nice and nice and comfortable. Okay, so let's hit the RPMs. Our idle is about 700, almost, almost 800 RPM supposedly. Right up there, let's see if I can focus. And we're being blinded by I'm getting white. There we go. We're focusing in. Now I'm going to hit the RPMs and let's look at what happens to our high side and low side pressure. Okay, here we go. RPMs up. Let's go like we're cruising down a 35 mile an hour roadway, somewhere about, oh, 16, 1700 RPMs. Let's see what happened over here. Well, there was a little glitch for a second as I hit the throttle and then it goes back to normal. That is how well a variable displacement compressor takes over and controls. As you can see, our idle is up. Now remember on old traditional cars with fixed displacement piston compressors, if you were to hit the throttle, your high side would go up and your low side would go down and you would come out colder out of the dash. Well, you can see almost nothing has happened here. Let's go faster. Let's go to 2000 RPMs, 2200 RPMs. Okay, so we're up at 2200 RPMs. Let's see what happens. Well, we got a reaction. And you see it going almost all the way back. It's trying to control. You can see we're at 2000 RPMs. It looks like we only dropped, what, 28 PSI from 29? We dropped one PSI. And actually it's starting to take over and take control. It's going back to 29 PSI. You see that? And we're at over 2000 RPMs. Old school guys say raise the RPMs and you lower the low side pressure. Not true. High side. We were at 139. It looks like there was a little increase that it could not compensate for. And you see we're at 2200 RPM still. And we're at 146 from 137. Only 10 PSI difference. Let's go over to our temperature. Our temperature is at 40 degrees Fahrenheit. We actually lost one degree. Remember we were over here at 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, we lost less than a degree. 40.5, 39.5, one degree. We went up in RPMs, but we went up one degree in temperature out of the dash. Old school way with fixed piston compressor, it would have went down. So are you starting to learn the correlation? I, I hope you've watched enough of these videos that Variable displacement compressors are different than fixed piston, and variable displacement compressors are different from each other from year, make, model, and different manufacturers actually do different things. You've seen me capture on video variable displacement compressors acting like fixed pistons and reacting just like a fixed piston when I put the RPMs up. Very few of them do that. 
but under certain circumstances, they have done it and I've caught it on video. So I just want to get the word out there and have as many technicians as possible to uh, not, uh, another thing, there's guys who are condemning compressors because they have cooling for other issues like a heater control uh, valves are not working right and they're blending in some hot air with the cold air and it's coming out uh, just mildly cool and they don't know that and they go and they hook up their gauges and they rev up the thing and they were told by old timers that the high side should go up and the low side should go down and the compressor is not doing anything and the low side might be you've seen on some of my videos 88 psi 99 105 psi and the low side did i say low side i mean high side and the low side might be 31 or 40 psi but yet it's coming out kind of warm so they condemn a compressor and they put a new compressor on customer just paid twelve hundred dollars to have a compressor on and it didn't fix the problem and it's because there was a blend air door problem underneath or a heater control valve problem underneath or maybe the old deteriorated gaskets around the blend air door for the heater control are all in the way and turned into dust and they're bleeding by a lot of hot air giving you moog air coming out of uh the dash that's not good but compressors get changed so these are the kind of mistakes you don't want to make because it gives your shop a bad reputation or it makes you look like a thief if they find out and some shops are they deserve that reputation or it just makes you look like you don't know what you're doing uh, sometimes a customer never finds out they were sold a compressor that they didn't need. That happens often. And sometimes it's because of this little electronic control valve right there. Right there. You see that? You see that little valve? This compressor can stop working because that little $40 valve right there, $20, $60, whatever it is, that you can simply take out with the snap rings, pull out that, put in a new one, and the AC, but what do they, what do they do? They sell the whole compressor for a forty dollar part. Can you imagine if one fuel injector went out? Oh, we're not going to sell the fuel injector. We're going to sell a whole engine. Yes, Mister Customer, your engine is bad because of one fuel injector. That's exactly you could think. You could almost think of this as like a fuel injector. We're going to sell you a three hundred dollar, a eight hundred dollar, a twelve hundred dollar compressor because it's little forty dollar. You know, it's not profitable to sell a forty dollar. Let's sell a twelve hundred dollar part. I don't like shops with that kind of thinking. That's really not good to the customer. And sometimes it's honest mistakes just due to lack of knowledge. And that's why I'm putting these videos out here. I want you guys to be smarter and do better work get a quality reputation name and be the guy that everybody wants to go to in your neighborhood, in your city, your state, your town, your country, your village, wherever you are, be the guy who's smarter than the guy down the block. Treat customers right and you'll do good just by honesty getting a lot of customers coming to you because you're the guy who always fixes the problem and you're not the guy who's just throwing parts at the dartboard wishing something will fix it. All right, guys, I'll see you later for now. And, uh, we will be back in a while. See you guys.